Hey guys, we are standing outside of Islands of Adventure and like most of the time we have food on our minds. Always. Yeah, it's more like always if we're being honest. But did you know that there are 16 restaurants inside of Islands of Adventure where you can stop and grab a bite to eat? So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna take you on like a food tour of Islands of Adventure and show you everywhere that you can grab some food. show you absolutely everywhere that you can get food here in Islands of Adventure, but we are going to show you all of the quick service and full service restaurants. And the very first one that you come to is the Croissant Moon Bakery. The Croissant Moon Bakery is the first of two restaurants here in the Port of Entry. As you're walking in, it is kind of all the way down on your right. They are open for both breakfast and lunch. During breakfast, they have some really great pastries as well as some hot breakfast sandwiches. But our personal favorite is the ham, egg and cheese empanadas. That is the perfect way to start your day. They also have some really great sandwiches at lunch. We don't eat lunch here all that often because we're usually further into the parks, but they are delicious. The second restaurant in Port of Entry is Confisco's Grill, and it's actually located right next door to the Croissant Moon Bakery. This is one of two full service restaurants here in Islands of Adventure, and their food is always delicious. I think Tyler's favorite is those ahi tuna nachos, and I am a big fan of the lettuce wraps. We find ourselves eating appetizers here a lot because their meals are really, really big, but they never disappoint. Also, they have like an upstairs area where you can can sit and look out over the park that is absolutely gorgeous and this is also one of the locations that when they have those pass holder appreciation food items they tend to have something here. As you round the corner to the right just past Confisco's you'll see some signs for the backwater bar and we're actually going to lump this together with Confisco's grill and the reason for that is that they're inside the same building you can actually access the bar from Confisco's and the food that they serve inside the bar is the exact same menu as Confisco's grill so they're essentially one in the same. As we continue making our way around the park the next land is of course Seuss Landon which has two quick service restaurants one of which is our absolute favorite over here in Islands of Adventure. So I think that means that we have to get some food there, right? We have to. Yeah, absolutely a must. If you didn't already know, our favorite quick service restaurant here in Islands of Adventure has to be Green Eggs and Ham. It's kind of hard to miss because the building is a giant green ham, but as soon as you cross <laughs> over that bridge from the Port of Entry, it is immediately on your left, and they serve all kinds of tots, tater tots, that is, and they actually have a new kind of tots that we haven't tried before, so we gotta get those, right? These smell so good. Wow, like just wow. Yeah. So we said there were some new tots and they are the pork carnitas tots. Yeah. So we just got those and ate those. And I've always said that the pizza tots have been my favorite, but those may have just taken over first place. Yeah, so mine have always been the buffalo chicken tots. Right. Like those have always been my favorite. And I don't think those were nearly as good as the buffalo chicken tots. I say nearly, they're all really good. We've, yeah. like, we've you had all the tots, we've had all the tots at this point and they're fantastic. But my favorite is the buffalo chicken pot, oh. but that pork carnitas that we just had, it was so good. Like, I can't wait to have those again. But now it's time to make our way to the next quick service restaurant here in Seuss Landing, which is Circus McGurkis. If you're looking for Circus McGurkis, it's kind of located in the back right-hand corner yeah. of Seuss Landing. It's just across the street from the Carasusel and right next to One Fish, Two Fish. Yeah, it's just a big family friendly tent that has food for the entire family so you, you can get stuff like caesar salads yeah. and chicken sandwiches pizza burgers it's like cafeteria style yeah but it's really highly themed inside and the seuss trolley actually has a route in yeah. which it runs through the top of it which is pretty neat yeah the cafe is absolutely adorable but the food is just okay yeah, it's fine like it's not bad or anything but it's definitely not something we're gonna come and like seek out mm. As you're entering the Lost Continent, Mythos is located just to the left, and it's right across the way from Poseidon's Fury. Yeah, and if you're still having trouble finding it, or an easier way to find it, in my opinion, is just look for the giant guy who's puking water. <laughs> may look like a waterfall, but it's definitely a guy 
puking water. Some of our favorites here are that um, the grilled cheese thing. The fork, knife, and spoon grilled oh, cheese. Oh, yeah, it's so That good. is delicious. It is so good. Also, they have a really good lamb burger. Yeah. We've never had anything here that we didn't enjoy. They no. have a, a pad thai. Yes. Yeah, they have a pad thai. It's that, pretty good. That a lot of people seem to rave about, and uh -huh. we've had it, and it's very good. The thing that I'll say about here is you got to make sure that you have reservations. Like, yes. Especially at the parts you're busy, you're not going to get a table. We showed up one time in March and tried yeah. to get a tried to get a table, and it was like a four-hour wait. And if you're hungry, you don't want to wait four hours to get seated. There are three restaurants here in the Lost Continent, and the second one that you come to is Fire Eaters Grill. It's located just past the bridge that will take you straight to Velocicoaster, and I personally think this is a really great restaurant for families because they serve chicken tenders here. And I know that there are a lot of kids that when they get hungry, the only thing that'll satisfy them is chicken tenders, so this is a great place to get that. But they also have some more adult meals as well, like they have some gyros that are pretty good, and I think our favorite meal here is the chicken stingers which is those chicken tenders but they toss them in like a hot buffalo sauce that's really really good maybe not exactly what you want to get when it's super hot outside and you're already sweating but they do taste really good as you make your way towards the end of the Lost Continent, right before you head into the Wizarding World, the final restaurant that you come to is the Desert Kebab House. And this one kind of holds a special place in my heart because it's one of the very first places that I ever ate in Islands of Adventure. They have both chicken and beef kebabs, and they now also have a vegan option, and they're very, very delicious, but they're also on the healthier side. So if you're looking for something a little bit lighter that's not going to break your diet, this is a really great option. They also have some hummus and they've recently changed their recipe for the kebabs. They used to be a little bit different and I think they're better now than they used to be and they were good back then. The only thing that I wish they hadn't changed is your chip options. You used to be able to get like normal Lay's chips as well as I think like some sun chips and now they're like a special like pita chip that's more on brand with the kebab house but I just don't personally think they're that great. As we were making our way into Hogsmeade from the Lost Continent, we caught a little bit of a rain shower. A little bit. So we had to take refuge, but the next restaurant as we make our way around the park is the Three Broomsticks. As you make your way into Hogsmeade, on the left-hand side, you'll see Honeydukes. Yep. And then just past that, it kind of opens up to the left and the Three Broomsticks is right there. And they do serve your traditional like British or English fare. Yeah, we don't eat here very often, mainly because it's super busy yes. all the time. I mean, like behind us, you can see there's not really anybody here, but that's because it's like, it's like 4.30 or something. It's a weird yeah. time of day for people to be eating. But typically when I come here, I'm getting the fish and chips. Yeah. Um, I just I just love the fish and chips here and at the Leaky Cauldron. Uh, but the the roasted or the rotisserie chicken yeah. is also really good. They do serve breakfast here, and it's fine. Uh, the potatoes, <laughs> the, the potatoes are really good. Oh. But the rest of the breakfast is just sort of like a standard breakfast. It's yeah. not bad. It's just. I wouldn't call it great. It, it's just a standard breakfast. Yeah, come for the potatoes. Yeah. A little bit of a pro tip with the three broomsticks as well. As you can see, there are some switchbacks behind me, and sometimes specifically around lunch when the parks are busy, you'll see a bunch of people wrapped up through here. And if that's the case, we don't really suggest getting in line because it's going to take quite a while. And you can also mobile order for the three broomsticks. And so if you put your mobile order in, you still have to wait through all of this line because these people back here are waiting for a table. They're not necessarily waiting to place their order so that they can get their food. They make you wait until a table is available so they actually have somewhere to seat you and that's why this line moves so slowly. The Three Broomsticks was our eighth restaurant that we've talked about so far, so that means we are just past the halfway point, and we've now made our way into the Jurassic Park area of Islands of Adventure, and the first restaurant that we come to in here is Burger Diggs. Burger Diggs is actually located in the Discovery Center, which is on the left when you walk in in Jurassic World. We've actually never eaten here, and I think the reason that we've never eaten here is because, like, the name insinuates they sell burgers. You can also get, like, a chicken sandwich here but you pretty much both have to be in the mood for either a burger or a chicken burger to eat here but I will say that some of the food that was coming out of there looks pretty darn good. As we make our way to the next quick service restaurant I did want to say 
that the reason that we don't ever eat at Burger Days is because later on in this list, there's a much better burger. You're exactly and, right. And, that, <laughs> and I, I, I was wondering if you were going to mention that, but you didn't, so I had to make sure that it was mentioned. Our favorite burger in not only Islands of Adventure, but the entire Universal Orlando Resort yes. is one of the restaurants that will be later on in the video. Our next restaurant in Jurassic Park is Pizza Predatoria. Yeah. And if you're trying to find it as you exit Burger Digs and continue your way through this part yeah. of the park, it is on the right hand side just before you get to the Raptor Encounter. So we don't eat here very often. Um, if we're getting pizza, we're going to be over in studios more than likely. Yes. But the pizza here is pretty good. It's arguably the best pizza over here in Islands of Adventure. Like, I would say it probably is. I would personally say so as well. I think the only time I've ever had this pizza was at one of the meetups. Oh, the when we could just, like, grab yeah. it, like, for free and not have to pay for it. And I was really impressed by how good it is. Yeah, I, we just don't stop here very often. No. Like, there's just... There's actually a stand that, of course, those aren't included in today's video. A little snack stand. If we're eating in Jurassic Park, we almost always stop at Natural Selections, which is just like one of the little stands Yeah, up get a here. little snack. Yeah, and that's like our favorite place to eat here. So we just sort of gloss this over. We need to give it, we need to eat here more often because, yeah, you're right. Like the pizza was pretty good that night that yeah, we had it. Yeah, need to give it another shot. The third and final restaurant in Jurassic Park is Thunder Falls Terrace. And if you're looking for it, you kind of just dead end into it at the end of Jurassic Park, right before you get to the King Kong ride. And they have some healthier, lighter fare at this restaurant. They have rotisserie chicken, which is really, really good. That roasted pork shoulder is also delicious. And they have some rice bowls and salads that are great lighter options. Another thing we really like about Thunder Falls Terrace is that it's right here by the splash zone with the Jurassic Park River Adventure. So you can sit out on this little patio here and you can watch the river boats come down that last big hill after they see the T-Rex and the water goes everywhere. Things you'll do for a shot. <laughs> Fun into Toon Lagoon, one of the most whimsical parts of the park, but there are three more restaurants in this area and you may remember me saying something about a really good burger being uh, in the park and it is over here as well and it is actually back here at Wimpy's. It always shocks me that there's not a line at Wimpy's. Like Wimpy's is never busy and the food is so good that it should always be busy. But I think part of the reason why there's not a big line here is because it's kind of hidden. It's a little bit out of the way. And so if you're looking for Wimpy's, it is right across the street from Popeyes and Bluto's build rat barges. You do have to like cross a bridge and yeah. it's kind of out of the way of like the main loop. So I think a lot of people just don't realize that it's here. And as far as what you get here, um, let's see, uh, probably the Wellington burger, yes. because like we said, it is the best burger in the park, in our opinion. We just think it's great. Like we don't get them as often as we should. No, no we don't. I mean, the doctors would probably say we get them too often, <laughs> but we don't think we get them as often as we should. And also, something else that you can get here is you can get that Dole Whip. Yes. And I think it's one of the only places that it's located in the park. Yeah. Uh, on a hot day, oh. it is so refreshing. The second restaurant in Toon Lagoon is Blondie's, and we kind of went past it when we walked all the way back towards Wimpy's. But if you're walking from the Jurassic Park area all the way through Toon Lagoon, it is going to be on your right-hand side. And it's kind of hard to miss because the facade is a giant, like, 20-foot sandwich on the front of the restaurant but it is right there just past Marmaduke and they have all kinds of deli sandwiches their classic like go-to sandwich is the Dagwood and I know that's what Tyler gets every time that we eat here I'm a little bit more of a ham and cheese kind of person myself but their french fries are really good they also have like some coleslaw and things like that it's a great place to stop in and get lunch or dinner and our final restaurant inside of Tim Lagoon is the Comet Strip Cafe it's like no, it's cafeteria style. Yeah, like how, a food court. And they have a wide selection, so this makes it a great option for families. Right. I mean, you can get pizza, you can get ramen, you can get noodle dishes, you can get Burgers. sandwiches. Yeah, like there's all kinds of things you can get in here. It's not our favorite. No. Of the three in Tin Lagoon, it's probably our least favorite. Yes. Once again, we're not saying it's bad. It's just <laughs> we almost never eat that. Yeah, we came and tried the ramen like right after they brought it no. in. And I don't know if it was like the fact that they had just started offering the yeah. ramen and it needed some tweaks, but 
I would much rather have ramen from other places. <laughs> yeah, it, so. it wasn't great. Um, the pizza's fine. Yeah. The sandwiches are fine. Yeah. They're, they're sort of similar to like what you can find at Circus McGurkis. Right. Like the pizza and the sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. Aspect. So they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, it's just not something I'm ever going to like seek out and be excited for. But yeah. if you're really hungry, like or, there's rarely a line here. Yeah, or if you have a family full yeah. of like picky eaters who all want something different, this is a great location. lump these last two restaurants together because they are both in Marble Island and it is super loud over there so kind of sought refuge over here in Port of Entry so that we could talk about them but the first one that you come to if you're walking from Toon Lagoon is the Captain America Diner and it is on your left hand side before you get to Spider-Man and then the second one is Cafe 4 and it's kind of right there beside the Hulk. If you walk across that bridge, the Hulk is above you and then the Cafe 4 Diner is just in front of you. As far as what to get here or what we personally suggest, I'm gonna be honest, Captain America's Diner or whatever, uh, we've never really eaten there. Yeah. I mean, like we've stopped and gotten fries, I think a couple of times, yeah. but that's about it. So we can't really suggest anything. It does look like they've been adding some new stuff to the menu. Yes. I don't remember like the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. No, it's a hot honey sandwich. And then there's sandwich. also like a barbecue pork burger, which yeah. sounds really good. And so I, maybe we need to give it a try. And maybe we've just overlooked those because we've never eaten there, but those looked new to us. Yeah. And then as far as Cafe Four goes, we, mm, we've had pizza from Cafe Four once and then we just have never went back. Yeah. I can't give it too hard of a time. And a, has gotten a chicken salad from yes. there one time and she said it was fine. Like, yeah, it was pretty good. It's just the pizza just isn't our favorite. Like, no. that's that's the best way to put it. It's just not our favorite. It tastes a lot like a Chef Boardy pizza. So, and then I know people, like my brother loves a Chef Boardy pizza. So if that's something you like, you can head to Cafe Four. That's just not necessarily our cup of tea. So like when somebody asks us where to get pizza, we just tell them eh, anywhere but Cafe Four. That's, that's, that's how we treat it. And just like that, we've made it all the way around Islands of Adventure and showed you a little bit about each of the restaurants. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know, is there a place from this list that you would like to see us do a full review on, like try all the items or something like that? That sounds like fun to us. Just let us know. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching.